when it, when it comes down to it, the whole thing about eating, diet and exercise is a bit of a misnomer. Hi, Charles Stevenson here. I just want to put this quick video up just in response to uh, a couple of questions I've had recently from some prospective clients and also from uh, someone that I finished working with, well, uh, about 48 hours ago, quite recently actually. Uh, this was a client that comes to me ostensibly for help with losing weight. And so if you're someone who's thinking about needing to lose weight, either perhaps because of it's something you've had on your mind for a long time, or perhaps it's something that you thought, you know, end of 2020, 2021, I want to make it happen for me this year. I want to lose a few pounds, kilos, whatever the number is for you. I just want to put out a couple of thoughts for you, give away just some three suggestions, three ideas, tips and thoughts, because I think you might be under a misapprehension. Many of the clients I've worked with have been under this misapprehension. It's really obvious, it's really basic. And so this is the message. If you think that your weight and your diet is just controlled by the two sides of like um, a scale of eat less, exercise more. If you think that all you're going to need to do is to eat less and exercise more to permanently adjust and healthily adjust your weight, well, I put it to you, you're wrong. Sorry, but eat less, exercise more is such a simple and for most people, a very naive way of dealing with the problem of your weight. To expand a bit further, there's no pun in expand, so to go further. Um, most people are fully aware that if they eat too much and don't exercise, they'll put on weight. And they might look at their waistband, look at the, the, the extra baggy tops they're buying, bigger trousers, you know, whatever, finding your shirt, your blouse is too tight. So you've been seeing this happen in your life for perhaps quite a while, quite a few months, perhaps a few years. And then when you get to November or December now, you're thinking, I've got to change. You've got to make a change. You've got to sort this out. But you know already that your eating is no good. OK, put that to one side for a second. What about also exercise? OK, you know as well as I do that there are millions of videos out there on YouTube on how to start up exercise if you've never exercised in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s. In your 50s, 60s, perhaps you've got an injury, there's videos for that. Perhaps you've got a health issue, there's videos to help for that. Perhaps you've got a particular hobby or a sport that you want to take forward. There's videos on that. So there's videos on how to exercise. There's books on how to exercise. There's classes you could go on how, that, that would help you to exercise. But you and I well know the majority of people that go on these classes and courses or download a video and follow along at home, most people after a while do one thing. They give up. Why is that? I'll come back. Think about the diet. Most people know there's certain macronutrients that they need to benefit them. And also most people, if you ask them, know that some things aren't as healthy as others as regards foods. Broadly speaking, if you're going to stuff your face with loads of sweet foods, stuff your face with loads of paper, potatoes, pastas and so on, it's not going to be good for you. That's not rocket science. The data is out there. The truth is out there. But still people do that. I wonder why. I'll come back to that in a minute. So, Effectively, anyone watching this live or on a replay, if you can hear what I'm saying and you can understand what I'm saying, you're not stupid. You could go onto YouTube, you can download the free PDFs. There's a million websites out there that are saying, download my food routines and my diet routines. Six, um, you know, two week, five week, 10 week, drop a dress size, blokes lose an inch, two inch off your waistband. It's free, it's out there. Exercise routines. Thousands of routines, they're out there. And perhaps you've already gone through that process of dealing with downloading that stuff, you've been reading the books, you've been looking at the information, you've been altering your cooking, you've been going out exercising. 
and it's not working for you. I wonder why. I'll come back to that. So, diet doesn't work. For mo most people, also, the exercise isn't working. Now, <clears throat> my suggestion to you is the one reason why it's not working is neither of those two sides of the, the, the scales of such, dealing with your food, dealing with your exercise, addresses the big issue. The big issue is what's in your brain. What's in your brain, specifically your old patterns and your old thoughts and the way you think about eating, exercise, how you look, how you feel, how you're meant to look, what's right for you. Now, I work with a lot of people for helping them deal with stopping smoking, but also I've covered many other areas as well. And one of the most often occurring subjects to deal with is can you help me lose weight can you help me drop dress size lose waistband etc but i don't teach people how to eat better i might tell them a few tips in general but they know and i don't tell people how to exercise better i've got some suggestions i've got some ideas and tips but they know the area where i work the area where i focus and where i create great results for my clients is what's in their brains because your brain acts like your own true north it's got a guidance system in there you've got in your brain it's like a cross between a cruise missile and a weevil do you remember the old weevil toys weevils wobble but they won't fall down you whack them and they come up you knock them down they come up your weight which is totally lockstep linked to your self-image what you feel about you what you think about you how you want to be seen in the world is controlled by your mind and your brain and your thoughts. So if you attempt to adjust your weight, like you may have done on the previous diet, and last year's diet, and last year's diet, etc., or you try to alter your exercise routines to alter your shape, I put it to you, there's going to be a very, very strong, near 99% definite certainty that whatever you do after a year you'll be back where you started and after a year later if you try again you'll be back where you started and perhaps even in a slightly worse place because what will have happened is you'll have spent a year or so fighting the thoughts in your mind fighting to try to pull yourself into a new shape a new build but you're fighting a part of your brain that says no way jose it ain't gonna happen it's not going to let you it's like you trying to make yourself do something that you really don't want to do since come back to basics it's all down to eating the right levels of food and exercising the right levels and so if you know those things if you know that you need to look honestly candidly at the level of calories you're taking in no bullshit no forgetting a biscuit a bar of chocolate, um, an extra cake, nibbling your children's food on the plate, oh, I feel bad leaving it, all that kind of malarkey. Tracking it and knowing it, once you know what's true and you track it and you look at your exercise routines and you track them, well, you can do that. I'm giving you the information for free. And even if you hadn't spoken to me or heard my article here or you played my video later, you know that, you're not stupid. The part that's stopping you is the part that's in your brain. The part that stops you from getting to the weight you want, to the exercise you want, the exercise strength you want, so on, is in your brain. Now, if you're already fit and healthy and you're looking to improve, say you're an athlete and you're looking to improve, that's different. That's a different level of motivation and thought pattern. What I'm talking about is specifically someone that is heavier than they should be. And in the broadest sense, let's play around with those BMI tables. There's a few arguments about whether they're right or not. Let's not go down there. Let's in broad terms say there's a level of weight that's probably right for someone's height and a level of weight that could be too much. And that's not a fattest comment. It's more a case of our joints, be them elbows, ankles, knees, shoulders, if you carry too much weight on them, they wear away. And as we get older, those joints do not replenish the surfaces as well as they should or could. And You've only got to Google data on any hosp any country's hospital system, 
and it will show you just how many hundreds of thousands of people effectively wear away their joints by carrying too much weight. That's not fat is, that's purely saying the bone structure in your body is not designed to carry over a certain limit. It's a bit like overloading a truck or a car and then moaning when you break the back axle. You shouldn't have put as much bloody load in the back of the truck in the first place. Now, the same thing applies to your body. If you put nothing in too much load in your body, you will knack your ankles, knack your knees, knack your hips. And then the question is, if that did not happen, you didn't wake up one night, you go to sleep on Thursday, you wake up Friday, oh, crikey, I'm 12 stone overweight. Where'd that come from? Mm -hmm. Ain't going to happen like that, is it? It would, will have taken quite a few years to get to that place. And the one consistent thought pattern in all of those years has been what's been going on in your brain. So it's not the diet, whatever you whatever diet you go to, the diet, it'll explode, it'll go wrong. You'll blame the diet. The exercise routines, if they're not working out and you try the next quick fix, the next latest idea, it's not that. The one consistent area, the one consist consistency in your issues around losing weight is what's going on in your mind. So if you're already working with a fitness professional, who is helping you to lose weight, and helping you to exercise, make sure that you're being honest and open with them to talk about your thoughts, about how you look, how you feel. And if it uncovers patterns and thoughts that you've been rolling with for 10, 20, 30 years perhaps, now's the time to open them, voice them, let the energy out of those thoughts because they are no more than just thoughts. They're not real. Whatever you think about how you need to look in this world, and frankly, it might be that it was protection, it might be because you didn't feel good about yourself, it could have been your parents or someone might have been hacking you off when you were a kid, whatever. It's not real, it's just a thought, but it's got awesome power over you at the moment. And once that power is discharged, you can then come. You can become the witch one the strength you want, the ability you want. Now, it may not address if you've knackered your elbows, wrists, knees, ankles. Sure, we may not be able to deal with that, but we sure as hell can drop your weight down massively. So if you are trying and stumbling on a weight loss journey, I put it to you. Yes, deal with your exercise. Yes, deal with your eating habits, but do not miss Focus upon what's happening in your brain, since that's the area that's really controlling what you will gain out of this. Otherwise, you're going to find probably like you've had before, the diets are on this year, it's not going to work. Because if you go back, say, three, five, ten years, I'd suggest you've been on a few diets, it didn't work. The diet isn't always to blame. Some diets are crap, some diets are stupid, and some diets you need your head examined to try them out. It's not just me talking, you look at enough doctors, they'll say that as well. In the same way, some exercise regimes are very strict, very hard, and aren't really designed for newbies. So be careful of the exercise you're using, and be careful of the diet you're using, but do not ignore, focus upon what's happening in your mind, because that's the area that will guide you, control, and control really whether or not this diet's going to be right for you. Because let's say, I don't know, pick a number, say you're 40, okay? What you don't want to do is be on a diet at 40, and then 41, and then 42, etc. You want to change your diet so it's part of a normal regime. You need to be able to be comfortable with having a dietary pattern that rolls for the rest of your life, subject to your health not changing as you get older. So the pattern that you choose has to be one you can stick with. So if you're looking at something you're going to do for a while and then go back to where you were before, just give up. Don't bother. If you're looking for some exercise to lose weight, what are you going to do afterwards? Are you going to stop? No. You've got to commit to introducing and including exercise in the rest of your life. Now, that might not be an hour a day. It might not be half an hour a day. It might just be elements during the week. 
but it has to be part of a pattern. Same as your diet. It hasn't got to be a diet that you just switch on and switch off. You just download a copy, run it for 30 days, and then bin it. It has to be an ongoing pattern. Now, I'm not flogging you some exercise routine. I'm not flogging you a diet routine. I don't care what one you use as long as it works for you. And it's healthy and can run long term. But it's got to be long term. So if, say, you're 40, picking a number, if you've been through diets when you were 38 and you tried something when you were 36 and you gave up for a while, but that last one you did was when you were, say, 32 or 34, and you've been up and down on different diet weights and you've upped and down your sizes, it's because your mind has been in control. You would like have two voices, two little parrots on your shoulder, one saying, eat less, one saying, fuck off, one saying, exercise more, one saying, do it later. You need to get those two voices to stop because they're going to control you. And you're going to try again. Perhaps now we've got 15 days to the end of the year. You might be one of the people that's going to be saying right now, oh, I know. Yeah, New Year's resolution. I'm going to this January. I'm going to go down the gym and I'm going to get fit. OK, what stops you doing something now? If you really want to get fit in January, why not start getting fit now? So when you go to January into the gym, you hit the ground running. You started doing something already. And if you're going to improve your diet in January, well, it should be a permanent change. So no BS. Rather than wait till January, do it now. Or rather, what's your excuse? And if your excuse is, I like my wine, OK, what's well, your choice? You're going to stay fat if you drink too much wine. Think of the calories. And if it's, oh, it's too cold to go out and exercise, it's dark. OK, indoor video, buy a mat, go on your Amazon, buy a mat for a fiver and then put it on the floor and exercise. In other words, the only reason that you're not fit and the only reason you might be overweight is because what's going on in your brain. So if you're exercising, you know, so if you've got a fitness professional you're working with, brilliant, stick with them, but be honest and open to them if you're having thoughts that might be affecting how you feel about yourself because they probably heard it before from other people and if not I'm sure they can find a way to help you specifically to move out through that since and if you speak to any other kind of coach or therapist that works with weight you would probably find if they've covered enough clients they'd be honest enough to say the vast majority of people who have issues around weight and exercise it's never the two obvious ones eat less exercise more because that's so obvious always going to be what's in your mind so what i'm saying to you is even if you did literally get a bit of paper and if you were to write down a list of the thoughts you have when you think about your exercise say you're 40 taking this number say you're a, a man or a lady you're 40. you've been slowly incrementing your weight for the last few years now you know, you, your blouse is too tight, your trousers are too tight, that suit you wanted to wear, the dress you wanted to wear. Not going to happen, is it? So get a bit of A4 paper and jot down first 10 thoughts that come to you when you think about how you are now. Then perhaps take another bit of paper and write down top 10 thoughts that you know, pick, a, pick the weight or the image, get in your mind the image of how you'd like to look. Say magically. You could rub Ginny's lamp and you got the wish you wanted. You got the body you wanted, the weight you wanted, the shape you wanted. What's given to you? You wake up in the morning, you're there. But I'd suggest part of your brain says no. So prove me wrong if you want. Get a bit of paper. Imagine in your mind that you are the weight you want, the strength you want, the physique you want. And then write down what the negatives of that would be. What the downsides of that would be. What that would say about you or what that would force you to have to say about yourself. Since on that sheet there, that's going to be gold. Gold dust that's going to tell you what your brain is driving you away from. Since those issues, when they're unbundled and dealt with, will give you the free opportunity to then be able to move to the weight you want. And whether it's 
up, not even lose weight. You might lose body fat and put on muscle. And since muscle weighs more than fat, you could become fitter, healthier, strong. Whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. You could lose quite a lot of your fat, but also put on muscle and actually become heavier. But the whole of your physiology will change. Your shape will change. You tone up in various ways, but become heavier. But your shape will change. So again, don't always focus on the weight. It's your shape. But yeah, do that. Two lists. One list. Why I didn't want to change. You know, I feel can't wear this, can't wear that, blah, blah. You know, list of 10 or 20 items. Other list. A list of, say, 10 or 15 or 20, whatever it is. Reasons why. You know, imagine the, the person you want to be. And then document all the reasons why. Hmm. Actually, I don't really want that. Because if I get that, how am I going to feel? Be honest, because only you need to know this. Keep it a secret. Well, you can tell me if you want. I'd love to help you. You know, I'll give you some free feedback. I could probably help you to crack some of those. You know, no charge. Happy to help. If you have got the brass cojones, the balls, the honesty to do that, the least I could do is give you some feedback on it. Because in that document, the if I change my life and I look differently, oh shit, I'm going to feel a bit whoa. Oh, it's a bit like, whoa, it's, um, I'm not sure about that. You mean look better, look fitter? I'm not sure about that. You come to me with that information privately, PM me, message me, I'll help you. I'll give you some feedback, I'll give you some shape on that that can help you to move. That's what you'll be blocking yourself with. Now, if you're watching this and you're already fit, you're already healthy, and you're looking to move up a level, then you will have probably already addressed some of these items. You'll know what I mean about image, self-image. But even so, you might have some issues like that floating around yourself, in which case, okay, yeah, same offer of open invite. You do this exercise, you come to me with your answers, I'll feed you back and I'll give you some help for free. I don't mind, happy to help. But all I'm saying is the whole premise, you are a human being. You know, we've evolved over millions of years. The principle is simple. We eat or we die. So we know we need food. And if you wind back to the pre-car, pre-zipping around on electric bikes, pre-pedaling on electric uh, little scooters, pre-being pre lazy buggers, basically, we used to all have physical jobs, physical, active jobs. So we know we need to eat. We know our bodies are designed to exercise. What's difficult about that? Nothing. Up here. That's where you're making it difficult. Now, it could be that the patterns you've got, you may have had them for, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Some of the patterns might have been laid down in your childhood, around puberty perhaps, in your 20s, 30s, 40s. Some of the clients I've worked with have been, you know, they bust past territory, you know, 60 plus, 65 plus, and they've still had issues around weight. So. Do not assume it's just a, a, a youth 20, 30 something lifestyle issue. Your weight and your body image counts for a lot. So you might be trying to push yourself in a direction that part of your brain says, no, it's not going to happen. So run with that. Recognize that if you're looking to make a New Year's resolution to help you to change your weight, to get fitter, to get healthier. Most people that most people that start their exercise in January, they ditch it by February, and they've gone in the gym by March. And if you're a regular gym goer yourself, you've noticed it. You can be in there you, in December. There's a last hurrah. There's a last minute rush of people before the end of for the Christmas festivities because they know they're going to be drinking and eating, boozing up a bit, and they want to get those pounds dropped in advance, not lose a bit of weight to make up what they're going to eat. And then when you get to January, it's like tube train rush hour on the central line. And then you get to February or March and it's like phew, Gobi Desert. Back to normal. The regulars are regularly there and all the newbies have gone. Don't let that be you this time. This time address the thoughts in your brain because that's where the problem lies. Actually, that's where the problem always lies. Get a bit of thoughts. And what's so clever is 
your brain is so powerful that when you adjust those thoughts, your brain has been going down the path of stone. Stay fat, stay fat, put on weight, put on weight, don't exercise, put on weight, don't exercise. And when you change the thoughts, your brain goes, oh, new program, lose weight, exercise. Okay, I'll do it. So you wake up tomorrow, losing weight, exercise. And during next week, you lose weight, exercise. And a few weeks later, you lose weight, exercise. Why? Because you changed the program. It's as simple as that. However, if you don't change the program, there's a very strong chance that whatever you do to lose weight and begin exercising won't stay the course because it has to be a life chart, a life changing process for your lifetime rather than a quick fix, download a PDF, get an article, watch a video, do it and then give up. Because if you do that, it throws the whole of your metabolism out and that's not good. So. You want some help on cracking some of those thoughts that are holding you back on your weight? Happy to help. At the least, just notice how you're eating. Notice your thoughts on when you're eating. Notice your thoughts about exercise and make sure that you're doing it for yourself, okay? Because you're the one whose body it is. Do it for yourself. You've got a wonderful opportunity. It's about 14 days to the end of the year we're rolling into 2021 we're moving into a window of time we've had a really weird time for exercise a lot of people may have used the i can't go to the gym as an excuse i'll let you into a secret amazon sell floor mats amazon sell home aerobic equipment and you can watch any video on the television so there's not been any excuses for exercising at home cold weather Ditto, no excuses for not exercising at home. So you've got the opportunity to exercise. You've got the opportunity to monitor what you're eating. Um, if you want any help, happy to help, be it, um, you know, work with me or I'm happy to give you some free advice. Uh, just in case I didn't say at the beginning, my name's Charles Stevenson. I'm a therapist and coach. I specialize in helping people quit smoking, but I also do a fairly interesting other range of areas often it's recommendations and often it's like the person who came to me recently for help with weight she'd actually come to see me about two years ago to stop smoking done it moved on with her life and then said you know what Charles I'd like to deal with this weight so we unpacked it and it wasn't weight it wasn't exercise it was some other thoughts we dealt with the thoughts she's now sorted it can be you whether you work with me or with someone else, it doesn't really matter. The essence is, it's not the exercise, it's not the eating, it's what's going on in your brain, that's what counts. So crack that and you can have a whole new vista on life and the health benefits are gonna roll forever. So yeah, PM me if you want some information, want some free advice, happy with that. Uh, if you want anything else, fire away. So Charles Deemson, you should find some links uh, around this Facebook post or it'll be on my YouTube channel, or it'll be on my website. Either way, have a great time. And um, yeah, think about it. Find out what your excuses are for not exercising and not eating, and actually look at what the reasons are. What's going to sort of, you're going to go, oh, cripes, what are you going to worry about when you become the person that you think at the minute you want to be? Because I put it to you that that's not the person you want to be, otherwise you'd be them already. So play around with that. Tell me how you get on. Happy to help you further. Um, PM me, message me, call me, whatever you want. It's not a problem. Charles Stevenson, signing out for now. Ciao.